Today I'm going to walk you through how I made this mixed media design in Adobe Photoshop. A popular topic in the past couple of years is mixed media art and how to do it in Photoshop. So the reason that I love mixed media is because you can mess with the process. On the screen right now you can see an example of what I mean by this. But essentially when you design a poster you go through a certain amount of steps and with mixed media you basically mess with those steps do things differently than you would do them normally and basically blend all different kinds of styles together. With all of this being said, I don't really think that we're going to be doing that today. And that's because I think the reason that you clicked on this video is because you really like how the thumbnail looked. And although the design we're going to be making today looks like mixed media, it's not really messing with the process like I explained just now. In this case, I'm just going to give you some pointers on how to simulate organic feeling in your designs. Before we dive into it, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the PSD file for this project for yourself. I'll explain it a little bit better later, but for now if you want it you can click the link down below. Alright, so before we start I wanted to tell you that we actually are going to be using a couple of assets in this video. Don't worry however because most of the things you can scan in yourself or take a picture with your phone and then cut it out by yourself. For me it's a little bit more convenient to use assets of the internet of course and by grabbing them you'll support me and my channel but just know that you can create these yourself of course. So first off we'll start with this video by Felipe Bostillo. Picture is just from Unsplash you can download it for free and I'll put a link down in the description below. The first thing that we want to do is add some texture to this specifically a photocopy texture. So this is a photocopy texture from the ink textures pack that I have on my website. So the way you can create this as a home is basically print out a black square on a piece of paper, scan that printed paper back in and make a copy of it and then print that out again and once you've scanned that second piece of paper in you'll get something like this so you can really see these scan lines in here and that's what we want to go for here so the first thing we want to do is go to image adjustments use saturation and we'll remove the saturation and we'll put that to minus 100 and this is so that our texture is completely black and white this way it won't affect any of the color in the picture that is already there next we want to change the blend mode of this to screen and this as you can see creates a maybe a little bit too light of an effect and the way we can fix that is by adding some contrast to our texture so we're going to go to image adjustments curves and by bringing in this slider right here we'll make a curve somewhere like this and this makes it a little bit more subtle as you can see next we want to press command or Control j on our keyboard and this will duplicate the texture and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply next we're going to double click on the curves adjustment here and once we drag this up a little bit essentially you want this to be quite light so if we just toggle the texture here you'll only see that there's a slight difference all right so one of my favorite mixed media techniques is creating collages and by creating collages you create depth in your composition so i had a fun idea on this and that's basically we're going to remove all of the clothing here uh, and basically layer a different texture underneath that we'll make the textures invisible for a second then we're going to select the photo go to select at the top and click on select and mask and basically we're just going to grab a brush and draw in the parts that we want to cut out let's zoom in here make sure that we grab the parts here between the fingers and we'll grab these traps right here and then we're good to go and the next thing we want to do is hold alt or option on your keyboard and then we're going to click on the mask button here on the bottom right as you can see this is now invisible i'll leave this up to you you can get really creative with this if you want to uh, what i want to do is i want to grab one of the marble paint textures that i've made a couple of years back and i want to drop those into my design Let's bring it to the back here and as you can see this line looks like her clothing which is pretty cool in my opinion. I'm going to quickly show you a free alternative if you don't want to get this texture pack for yourself. I would love for you to buy all of my textures but of course if you don't have the budget I want to give you a free alternative. So you want to make a new layer, go to render, clouds, next we're going to go to filter, liquify. I'm going to grab the twirl clockwise tool here and I'm going to start painting in. You can also grab the warp tool here and just basically go ham. Something like this should be fine and we can just move that down. Next we want to go to adjustments here. If you cannot find this window you can go to window adjustments. I will click on the gradient button right here. This will add a gradient map and we'll add in one color and do a nice bright green. So as you can see we now have something similar to our texture here without the need for buying it. So I'm going to make this invisible and call this free alternative. Let's name our layers real quick and I've turned on the textures again. Uh, the thing is however I want to basically make sure that these textures are only affecting the photo. So I'm going to right click, 
create clipping mask and do the same for the other texture here. So now we only have the texture on the photo here and not on the cutout beneath it. So now I'm going to do another way to add some depth. I'm going to add in a paper tier. I have some paper tiers in my paper packs, but of course you can simply grab some paper at home, rip it off and basically take a picture of it or scan it in. It has the same effect and the reason why I'm doing this is basically for my own convenience. So let's uh, put it right here. Actually, let's rotate it 180 degrees. Next, I'm going to go and hold all or option on my keyboard and click on the photo. And it's to solo it. I'm going to go to select subject. And this will make a selection of the model here. And I'm going to hold all or option again. So every layer is visible again. I'm going to put my paper tier in a group and I'm going to click on the mask button on that group. And as you can see, our paper tier is not only visible where our model is visible, but if we select our mask here and press Ctrl or Command I on our keyboard, this will invert the layer mask. And now it's basically visible right behind her face. Next, let's add some text. As you can see, the text is also in the group here, which makes it invisible. I've typed out the word mixed for mixed media, of course. And the font that I've used is called Subway New York Regular. You can find it on Adobe Fonts if you want to. All right, so to make this text a little bit more realistic and simulate an ink effect, I'm gonna right click on this, convert it to a smart object, hold Alt or Option on my keyboard. And if I click between these layers, you can also create a clipping mask. So it's basically the same thing that we did with the texture just earlier. This is just a little bit quicker. So make sure that this icon appears here and then we'll click. And this will make sure that our text is constrained to our paper tier here. By the way, guys, I recently put out a video on how to achieve professional ink and printed effects. I cover all the basics there and it's basically a really quick and useful video if you want to create print effects for yourself. The method I'm going to use now is basically a quick version of that. But if you want to learn more, click on the video that's popping up now on the top right or check out the link in the description down below. So to simulate this really quickly, we'll go to filter, blur box blur and we'll type in a radius of one pixel and we're going to go to filter one more time and repeat that box blur but then with a radius of three pixels on the little slider next to the top box blur i'm going to double click and change this opacity to 50 percent and we'll click ok and let's do one more box blur and let's type in a radius of six and again let's go to this little slider right next to the top box blur i will change the opacity to 50 percent again and this will basically make sure that the top box blur here is uh, not 100% opacity, of course. Next, what I'm gonna do is change the color of the paper tier. And the way we're gonna do that is by selecting our paper tier in the layer menu, go to image, adjustments, use saturation. And I wanna give this like a teal color, I guess, somewhere between cyan and green. With something like this, uh, should do the trick, it's plus 162. And next, what I wanna do is hold all or option on my keyboard and drag that tier layer over my mixed text here and i want to of course hold alt or option on my keyboard and click in between the layers to create another clipping mask and we're going to double click on the hue saturation of that duplicated tier i'm going to change the saturation to minus 100 which makes it black and white and you might have already guessed what we're going to do here we are going to change the blend mode to screen and we're going to go to image adjustments curves again to add some texture here and now if we zoom in you can see that there's some texture in our text here so now we've created some depth uh, on our photo let's group these together so we know what each of these layers are call this one model and we'll call this one mixed sticker so next what i want to do is i actually want to add some color to the photo here just to correct it a little bit and make it look a little bit similar to the rest of the photo and add some like white decay vibes so we're going to go to adjustments and we're going to click on the gradient map here and the gradient map that i'm going to use is this one it's part of my dreadlap styling kit volume 2 if you want to copy the settings i'll just leave this on the screen right here and you can just pause the screen and create something similar to this all right and now we're going to change this gradient map to overlay so now we are where we started with the example all right guys there you have it my full process on creating this artwork like we said so to repeat one more time what we've learned today we added in photos added texture to those photos we created depth by adding layers basically creating holes in our photo and placing stuff behind it with paper tears we simulated a printed effect on the piece of paper and we also did some color correction here with the gradient maps so like i said earlier in the video if you want to get the photoshop file for this and experiment with this for yourself the textures are included in there in the full highest resolution possible 
uh, you can become a Patreon member of mine. So if you don't know, I've been creating graphic design tutorials and videos for four years almost now, and we're nearly reaching 500 videos on my channel. All of those tutorials are just there for free. So if you want to become a better graphic designer, basically check out my channel because there's a lot of free content on there that will help you be a better graphic designer. Thing is, however, in order to create new videos for you guys on a weekly basis, it takes a lot of time, of course. I need to write scripts, record videos and edit them. Thanks to my patrons, I'm able to make enough income to do Dreadlabs full time. But if I wasn't able to do that, I would be forced to get another day job. And with that day job, I wouldn't have enough time to create more videos for you guys, of course. That's why I want to take a moment and give a huge shout out to all of my members on Patreon, because without you, there wouldn't be a Dreadlabs. It would mean the world to me if you could check out my Patreon channel, because it comes with a ton of perks. First off, like I said, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, which at this point is over 100 PSD files, I think over 70 Illustrator files and much more. You'll also get full access to all of my past live streams where you can see my full design process. You'll get a 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell the textures and packs that I've used in this video, as well as an exclusive Discord role in our Dreadlabs community server, which is a Discord server with over 3000 graphic designers and music producers. We ask questions, answer questions, give each other feedback on our work. It's basically a place where we help each other become better designers. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that contains exclusive tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make death metal logos from scratch, beginner tutorials for Adobe Illustrator and more. You'll also get access to all of the project files from my Creatober series, which is an additional 100 project files that you can experiment with and learn from. Of course, I do understand that it might be a little bit expensive to subscribe to a Patreon channel in this time, which is completely understandable. And I wanted to let you know that you can also subscribe for one month, get access to everything that I just told you about, and then unsubscribe immediately. This will give you one month of access, but of course this does mean that you won't get access to any future project files and new ones are added every single month. If you do not have any budget whatsoever, leaving a like and a comment on this video will help a lot as well. Ever since you started doing that more often, my videos are doing better in the algorithm, which really helps me out as well. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. A lot of my subscribers seem to not see my new videos when they pop up. So clicking on that bell notification button, click on all notifications and you'll never miss a future tutorial. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.